Uh, welcome to uh, this class, Disaster Risk Management Part 3. As you know, uh, we have already covered two parts in our last classes, and this, this is going to be the third part of Disaster Risk Management. I am Mohammed Sagheer. Uh, briefly, I will introduce myself. Uh, my education is uh, Master of Commerce, MCOM, and MA Political Science. And if you like to note down my email address, it is given below saveer.mohammad at gmail.com. I hope. Uh, I'm clear to everyone and everyone can listen to me. As far as my professional experience is concerned, I have been working with different international organizations uh, like uh, USAID, United Nations World Food Program, CRS Catholic Relief Services, and United Nations Development Program. I'm working in the development sector since 1984. And the organizations, those I mentioned, I have been working with those organizations uh, at a senior level position for short-term and long-term positions. And since 2008, I'm working as an independent consultant. And some of my major uh, services, those are uh, I rendered to different organizations are uh, related to trainings. Since May uh, this year, I am conducting online classes for the students of AIU. And uh, before that, I have also conducted series of uh, trainings. And before the training conducted, training need assessments uh, for the staff working at different international organizations. And uh, as a consultant, I have rendered my services related to monitoring and evaluation. Uh, that was uh, to the international organizations, those work working in Pakistan. Uh, since I've been working in Pakistan, since I started my uh, career, uh, my all experience is in Pakistan. And I have conducted series of research surveys uh, for instance, poverty alleviation survey, participatory appraisal missions, I, I was part of that. And uh, related to all these major activities, I have been producing uh, reports uh, as per the requirement. And uh, gender equity and equality was uh, one of my major services, those I, I rendered. And uh, I would like to mention here about uh, my experience working with uh, since Judicial Academy, where more than 400 uh, honorable judges were trained, and I was working over there as a senior monitoring and evaluation expert for monitoring and evaluating these trainings. And on daily basis, I gave my feedback to the trainers for the coming sessions so that they are on track and the trainings are kept as per the objectives. As far as the disaster risk management is concerned, I have uh, rendered my services uh, to the World Bank and to some of other organizations. Uh, related to uh, World Bank, that was a preparation of five years disaster risk management plan for the government of Balochistan and preparing standard operating, operating procedures related to disaster risk management and that was approved by the government of Lochistan and all the presentations as a team lead I made uh, to the minister who was responsible related to disaster management. 
and now <clears throat> today we are going to discuss more in detail in our this session that is part 3 and the objective of this class is to learn the phases of disaster management there are as you know four phases briefly we discussed in our last classes preparedness response recovery mitigation and today we are going to discuss all these phases in detail so so that you have a broader knowledge about these phases and the knowledge which you gain will be enabling you to use while working in the field. And we will also discuss how to manage disasters. And there are humanitarian principles. Those are kept in mind. While once we talk about disaster risk management today, we are going to cover that. So this is the major, I mean, I would say objectives of the today's class. As far as the structure of this class is concerned, it is review of our last DRM classes. Briefly, I will review our last classes. And uh, for the today's presentation, it will include phases, as I mentioned, of disaster management, humanitarian principles, and how to manage the uh, disaster management, how, how to manage the disasters. And during the presentation, I will ask some questions from, from the participants um, so that uh, they have also interaction in that. And we will start Uh, with the review of last DRM class, it will include what is disaster, types of disaster. We discussed last time natural disasters, human-made disasters, and what is the concept of disaster resilience. The review will cover all these topics now. As far as disaster is concerned, it is an incident that harms human human's life, property, and thus disrupt social activities. In fact, in the case of disaster, it exceeds the capacity of community to cope using its own resources. I would add that in addition to the community, in some of the cases when there are major disasters, the government has to look for donors for assistance so that the disaster is uh, managed and the community is served accordingly. The major purpose is to save lives and to save property. Disasters, as you know, as we discussed in our last session, can be natural, man-made, and technical, technical logical hazards such as gas leakage, oil spill, nuclear, and industrial fires. So when we talk about the national disasters, national, natural disasters are predominantly associated with natural process and phenomena. In fact, it, it is by nature and nobody has control over it. But the thing is that we should be able to manage all these calamities and we should know how to deal with disasters so that there is minimum losses of life and the property. It is caused by Earth's natural process that leads to significant environmental degradation and loss of life. There are many types of uh, natural disasters that include earthquakes, tsunami, flood, drought, volcanoes, wildfire, landslides, thunderstorm, 
tornadoes, cyclones, typhoon, hurricanes, and glacier. And all type of these natural disasters we have discussed in detail in our last classes. This is just to refresh and uh, our memory and to update you and review it. And now, now we are going to discuss as per our last classes, just for the sake of review again, what is human-made disasters? In fact, it is done something when people on purpose to cause harm to others, or it can be accident when something harmful happens by mistake. In this kind of disaster, as the name indicates, it is by the people. That the major human-made disasters are related to terrorist attacks, civil disorders, nuclear explosions, ex war, dam breach, conflicts, wildfire. And we have already discussed these type of human-made disasters in our last class. And now we are discussing briefly what is concept of disaster resilience. Disaster resilience is the ability of individuals, communities, organizations, and states to adapt to and cover from hazards, shocks, or stress without compromising on long-term prospects for development. And when it goes beyond that, as I mentioned earlier, then the community, the government, or the different organizations seek for assistance from different uh, donors or organizations working in their own country or outside the country. We are going to use the word management time and again while talking about disaster risk management. So I think uh, we should have a very clear idea uh, before going into the detail of disaster risk management, what is management in fact? And <clears throat> so that we have a clear understanding and we have in back of our knowledge, the idea about management. In fact, management is the process of getting the job done. For what? In fact, it is for achieving the goals and an efficient and effective manner. How can we do it? By, by planning. Uh, when we talk about the planning, planning, it is the process of establishing and setting up the goals, organizing. It is related to organizing the work, the type of work, by, by, by making it in groups so that the work which is done in order to achieve the objectives is well organized. And staffing, that, that relates to recruitment and the training of staff. Directing, it is again related to <clears throat> guidance, how the staff is performing how they have to perform their duties that may include trainings or on-job trainings, or that requires the leadership. Leadership doesn't mean that the team has to do everything and the leader has to sit idle, no. So it is a joint effort for achieving the project by the team leader, including its team and controlling. When we talk about controlling, it is controlling all controlling of all type of resources. For instance, human resources. When the staff is recruited, they have 
a job description for performance and the, their performance plans are pre prepared and their performance are reviewed so that they are performing according to the plans for achieving the results and the objectives. It is the, it is the responsibility again that comes under the supervisor or the team leader for control. And in addition to all that, there are different <clears throat> resources. Those are controlled are managed. Those are related to uh, finance, finance like the budgets, the material, whatever is procured, and the time. It has to be very efficiently and effectively managed so that there is no major losses or that there is no wastage of time and the program objectives are achieved in time by implementing it as per the plan. This is uh, briefly, I, I thought we should have a clear uh, concept related to that uh, different management requirements uh, that will also be helpful while managing the disasters. Now, we are going to talk about what is disaster risk management. Disaster risk management is about organizing. You have already heard the word organization, organizing. Now you know what to organize and directing. You have already heard about that, what is directing. Resources to cope with the both natural and human-made disasters by dealing with all four phases. In fact, the phases related to disaster risk management applies the same for human-made disasters and natural disasters. These are four phases, responses, recovery, prevention, preparedness. And we are going to discuss now all these phases in detail. These are the phases. Now we are going to talk about preparedness. What is preparedness? Preparedness is a pre-disaster ongoing process in which individuals, community, government, and organization, organizations plan. It is not only the community or it is not only the organizations or the government. It is joint effort of all the all those stakeholders for what to cope with the disaster by minimizing physical and property damages. <clears throat> Preparedness ensure that highest level of readiness so that once uh, the community, the government, the organization has a plan and they, they are very much clear about the plan in case of disaster, how they are going to manage it, they will be able to do it. So that means they should be all the time alert and ready and they should have prepared all these plans and they should have also available all the required resources. While talking about uh, management, we talked about the resources, what kind of the resources are required in order to achieve any goal or objective. In this case, the same applies here. So, so now, what are the components? What, what is included? In the preparedness plan, these are contingency planning, planning for evacuation and relocation. You may know that evacuation in case of earthquake, war, flood, the area is evacuated 
and as per the preparedness plan, those were already prepared. The community and the organization and the government is well aware where the community will go in case of disaster and where they are going to be relocated. It is not on job task, it is already planned for that and setting, setting up warning systems. Warning systems may work in some of the cases, for instance, uh, flood or different kind of weather conditions. <clears throat> for all that, there has to be ongoing training of all the stakeholders. And in case of fire, there should be drill and emergency rehearsals. Mechanism for food and water distribution, what would be the mechanism? And it is already prepared and implemented accordingly. Building temp temporary shelters in case of evacuation, they are Re, uh, they are relocated in, in shelters and the shelters are <clears throat> uh, built temporarily. Devising management strategies, monitoring and corrective actions. All the time, you know, when any, 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 any plan or project is implemented, it has to be monitored and evaluated accordingly. The monitoring helps in order to guide, to implement the program in right direction and to have the resources on time in order to achieve the objective. Response. Response is defined as the action taken to decrease mortality and morbidity and to prevent further property damage when the hazard occurred. Response is putting the preparedness plan into action. First thing was the planning, the preparedness, and now we have to put in action all these plans and we should be ready for that. It, it improves response activities are, for instance, public warning, like I mentioned, early warning system, personnel deployment, it is related to the staff, search and rescue is required in case of, for instance, earth, earthquake or, or the floods, uh, things like that. Triage, primary assessment of patients or casualties, so that on a priority basis, who needs immediate attention is treated. And th that is sort of a preliminary assessment of patients. Acute medical care, firefighting, distribution of food and water. These are the basic necessities uh, for the life. And there should be a proper mechanism, distribution mechanism for food and availability of water <clears throat> as per the requirement. Health and hygiene, that is also required, uh, and provision of equipment. Recovery. Next phase is called recovery. Recovery is defined as the action taken to return to normal following a disaster. After disaster, efforts are made so that everybody goes to a normal life. During recovery phase, the individuals, communities, government, and institution start working to return to normal after disaster, relying on their own skills, experience, and resources to rebuild their lives. So it is not that case that they have to live in those shelter permanently, no. There should be a recovery phase where the, again, they have to go back to normal life. The recovery period falls between the onset of the emergency and reconstruction period. Reconstruction may, may include any kind of infrastructure, houses, 
and all related <clears throat> actions, those are related to reconstruction. Recovery includes restoring and provision, what? Food, of course, for the life, clean water, utilities, transportation, health care, back to education, claims processing, and grants. The effect is there could be, I mean, according to the resources, there could be availability of grants so that those are managed and given to the effectees as per as per their need and as per the availability of the resources or these are related to the priority what what is the priority according to the priority these grants are distributed recovery also in, involves repairing reconstruction of infrastructure repairing reconstruction of damaged buildings reconstruction of houses and building of roads that i already mentioned now prevention and mitigation of course these two phases are very important but the thing is that how can we prevent the disasters we cannot stop them but we can try to prevent and to do what to mitigate so that means disaster prevention and mitigation are used as synonymous prevention is to ensure that human action and natural phenomena do not result into disaster or emergency preventive activities are aimed at trying to prevent future disasters mitigation along the same lines also means reducing the severity of the human and material damage caused by disaster one of the examples we can we can uh, we can quote for instance in case of floods the, the dams uh, building of dams is one of the possibility and so on. And in case of uh, in case of where there are frequent earthquakes, the building designs or the structure designs should be uh, in a way that it 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 is shock proof and earthquake proof. So the lives and the building buildings are minimum lost. There are different types of uh, prevention and uh, mitigation activities. Avoid cutting trees to protect environment. <clears throat> you have noticed that there are many problems because of cutting of trees. It is, I mean, uh, self-created. These are self-created problems. And, uh, and we, uh, we disturb the environment once we cut the, uh, the trees or we do not grow the trees as per the requirement. Construction of dams for flood control, disaster res resident buildings, Prediction, prediction and warning systems that that is helpful in case of in case of um, floods and weather conditions public awareness again it depends what kind of system is applicable it is not in all cases the same it is the geographical area it is uh, the access to the community and considering all these concerns, the public awareness or warning system is uh, devised. Evacuation plans 
is one of the preventive measures. Preparing building codes, there should be codes uh, for buildings. Demarcation hazardous zones. In this case, uh, there are some demarcations that in this area, this is flood prone zone and no buildings should be uh, built over there. Vulnerability assessment mapping. So now uh, I have a question and uh, you can write it down. Comment in chat. The question is, disaster management phases for natural and human disasters are the same. Is it true or false? I repeat the question. Disaster management phases. We discussed, as you know, four phases. Are the same for natural disaster, human disaster? Is it true or false? Please write down your answer in comment in chat. Now, we will see the answer. The answer is option A, true. It is correct. A is correct. Disaster management phases for natural and human disasters are the same. That means there are no separate disaster management phases related to natural and human disasters. These are common for these type of disasters. So now, if we go further, now we are going to talk about humanitarian principles. When we talk humanitarian, assistance, there are set principles so that the assistance goes to the needy persons irrespect of, irrespective of humanity. It should be neutrality without impartiality and it should be volunteer service, independence and universality. Now we are going to discuss one by one what is humanity and others. When we talk about humanity, it is to prevent and alleviate suffering wherever it may be found. To protect life and health and to ensure respect for the human being. Impartiality. We have discussed related to implementation of the plans, preparedness, and uh, rehabilitation, all these things. But the thing is that impartiality is very important in order to carry out humanitarian action without 
discrimination. There should be no discrimination. There should be no any kind of discrimination. And to relieve suffering for what? So that suffering is relieved. And there should be no priority. And the priority should must go to, to the most urgent cases of disasters. This is this is the only case that the priority should go. So in order to summarize it, we can say impartiality is to carry out humanitarian action without discrimination to relieve suffering, giving priority to the most urgent cases of disasters. Independence. To remain independent from political, economic, military, or other non-humanitarian objectives. While giving relief assistance, there should be no political pressure and no political pressure should be acceptable and they should be independent from political, economic, military or other non-humanitarian objectives. It should be purely on humanitarian grounds. <laughs> 